If we don't actually believe what we are saying, then that faith is really just self-deception. And we are hearing a lot of that in what is passing for political discourse for the coming election. Let's not get drawn into that kind of faith. A few weeks ago, we read in the letter to the Hebrews a definition of faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Then follows a whole family tree of Hebrew forebears for whom faith in God is identified as their common DNA. The connecting thread of their family history. In the sermon that day, I said, Jesus creates faith by announcing a promise, God's promise. God's promise creates a relationship. In today's reading from the second letter to Timothy, the author also sees faith as a relationship lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, a faith which then can be said to live in you. This is not merely a family hand-me-down, but a gift of God that is within you and a good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Faith as a gift from God makes it possible for us to live out our relationship with God in our relationship to all humanity. Let me repeat that. Faith as a gift from God makes it possible for us to live out our relationship with God in our relationship to all humanity. Three weeks ago, I shared part of the story of Justin. Let me tell you another part of that story. This part of the story is about his parents and one of the reasons that Justin turned out to be such a remarkable young man. After the accident that caused Justin's death, the police were, of course, called to the scene. The police arrived at that tragic site and called his parents to come and identify their son. By the time his parents arrived, the chaplains of the police department were also there waiting for them. The chaplains wanted to offer their assistance to Justin's parents, whom they knew would be devastated by their son's death. I'm sure that you can understand the devastation they experienced as they encountered the battered and lifeless body of their 19-year-old son. Also at the scene were the other eight teenagers who had been in the SUV. They were traumatized, not only by the death of their friend, but about their almost involuntary involvement in this tragedy. Certainly, they were not prepared in their short lives to deal with the emotional impact. It must have been astonishing to the chaplains for Justin's parents in their misery to say, we have a faith community with which we have a deep relationship and we will get all the support they can give through our priests and our friends there. We will be okay. Please go and spend your time with the driver of the vehicle and the other kids who are here because 
we don't know what kind of support they have. And the next day, they took flowers to the driver and his family as a sign of God's grace and their forgiveness in the midst of this horrible tragedy. Let me tell you, that was an act of faith. The kind of faith today's gospel is about. They are the faithful servants Jesus talks about in today's gospel. They were not expecting any kind of reward. That is the kind of faith that moves mulberry trees into the sea. We may never know whether the degree and the depth of our faith are adequate to life circumstances, but faith is a gift empowered by God's amazing grace that enables us to entrust ourselves to God, the one whom we have found to be trustworthy. The faith you have is sufficient. What you have is more than enough. Trust what you have been given. All you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. And you already have it. Amen.